YouTubers. Today we're going to be installing the GY6 conversion kit for rear brakes. In this kit comes a hub, caliper, caliper bracket, a hose, rotor bolts, rotor, the banjo fittings and all the hardware along with the spacer here. We're going to walk you through the process and show you how it's done. There's no grinding so it should be pretty simple. We'll see how it goes. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take off the CVT cover and we're going to take off this plate right here so we can get to the gears. You're going to drain the oil and all this taken off can be found on our short axle removal video and we're going to try to put the link above. If not, you can definitely look through our GY6 videos and find that link. All this stuff's supposed to come off. Your CVT uh, variators comes off. Your clutch comes off because we need to get access to these bolts here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So what we're going to do is take these off, take this out, and your wheel should be off and also your exhaust. If you can take off just the muffler, that's fine. If not, you just take the whole muffler off and we'll show you that on the other side. What we're going to do is take this off first, take this out, and then we're going to take off the brake shoes, this lever here, and show you all that steps. All right, we're going to take these off. We're going to use an 8 mil socket. And before you do this, you should definitely drain this on the bottom here. This is where you're going to drain it. It's a 10 mil. You're going to take that off and drain it out first and then you remove these bolts. We've already pre-drained it just to make it faster. So what he's doing now is taking out the bolts. Just remember what bolt goes where because they're different sizes. And you might want to put a piece of cardboard on the bottom even after you drain that for residual because there is still going to be some left over. So you may have to pry this off with a screwdriver and it does have dowel pins in there. So you just take that out and you're going to have a gasket or some RTV depending on your motor and these gears will probably pop right out. And just take the gears out just like that. And you might want to go ahead and clean this off as well when you uh, because there's probably some gunk in there and we're getting a rag right now to clean it all out and this would be a good time to go ahead and scrape both sides of your gasket off with a flat blade make sure you get it all out all right now we're going to go to the other side and show you what needs to be done so we're going to use that 10 millimeter socket to take this bolt out so we can take the brake lever off and previously we had already taken this out and removed the cable through here uh, this is actually an 8 millimeter I'm sorry so it's an 8 millimeter socket we'll take that out and you're going to need a screwdriver most likely to pry it or split so it will come off sometimes you don't have to we'll see how this one goes so you Move the spring, and let's see if we can uh, move your hand real quick. There's, it's actually split, so we'll see, he'll show you where he put the screwdriver. Right here in that split to pry it open. Now, next thing we're gonna do is remove the pads for the shoes. I'm sorry. I'm sure there's some guys saying those aren't pads, so I know they're, they're shoes. And you just kind of make a V and they should come out. This guy's weak here, so oh, there he goes. I'm just going to toss this and that pulls right out. There's a little O-ring in there. It should pull right out. You might have to take a plier, but it should come out. So I'm going to show you what the other side looks like. All right, so we're going to put this bracket on or show you what we need to do for this bracket. So we're going to use this existing hole here 
and then we're going to have to drill a hole here so when this slides in the holes there and goes through here so we're going to show you those steps we're going to go ahead and remove this take that out and then we also need to take this out as well so I'm going to show you how that comes out and on the other side of this this is actually threaded there's a bolt in there so we're going to go ahead and take this bolt out it said number 12 socket that you're going to use. And it should come out, but we might need a hammer and an extension. You can hammer it out. So you can see here it has an o-ring. That's why it's kind of hard. So you're gonna remove this because you're gonna use the supply bolt that comes with this. So what we've done is we went ahead and take some blue tape or you need to stick something in it, but not all the way through because on the other side, we're gonna go ahead and recess that bolt for the flathead that's included in the kit. So we're gonna use a deburr tool that we picked up at Harbor Freight. And this is the DeBro tool. You can also use a step bit, um, but you need to recess it or countersink it for the supplied bolt. So it fits flush, because right now it's just straight. So we'll show you how to do that. So we went ahead and put some tape here and we're gonna show you on the other side what we're doing. So you have two, actually it's three, but the two that we're going to be using right now is a 40 mil millimeter long and a 30 millimeter long. The 40 millimeter long is going to be here and the 30 millimeter long is going to be here. So what we're going to do is countersink these two holes so this fits flush on both of those. And that's what we're going to use that bit. So we're going to do that and show you because this goes here with the long and then this one is actually to plug the hole and we'll show you how to do that. All right, so what we're going to do is start deburring this or countersinking it. test fit it and you want to make sure that's flush so as you can see he's test did it and now he's going to keep on doing it So we've also used a step bit that we picked up at Harbor Freight, item number 69088. It's a two pack. So we've used this and then we also used a countersink bit as well that we picked up at Harbor Freight and it's item number 61629. So these are the two, we'll try to put some links on there as well but you can pick these up anywhere usually just the big ones some guys have these laying around the house you just need to drill that out so it fits flush go ahead and now it's nice and flush we're going to go ahead and do this one next so 
go ahead and drill that one out. Don't go too crazy. As you can see, a little bit more. Now we're going to try to use the countersink bit. So we use this to open a hole. Now we're going to countersink it with the supplied bit that we talked about. So it's like this when you're going to do a little bit more. Okay, that should be fine. We're gonna actually show you, we're gonna RTV this in. There's a nut that goes on the back and that's the 30 mil. So we're gonna put some RTV in here and that's because oil is comes out of this bolt here. What some guys do too is they use the other one and they fit it flush and they cut it. But remember, if you cut it, then it's gonna probably fall through the other side. That's why we've actually used this flathead so it can't fall through. We'll go ahead and put that in, RTV it, and then put the nut on the other side. So now we're gonna go ahead and we've countersinked this, drilled it out. We're gonna use, to remember, the 30 millimeter long flathead. We're gonna put some black RTV around this. And you're gonna use the nut that this was on. You're gonna reuse this nut and it's got a 12 millimeter, it's a locking nut. So as he puts it in, we're gonna go ahead and make sure you get a nice good amount on there because you don't want oil to be coming out from this side. So he's actually putting a good amount. And I'll show you kind of how much. We're going to go ahead and put the bolt through. And we're putting the nut on the other side of this flat head here to tighten it up. You don't need to go too tight. Because after all this is just cast. Wipe off the excess. And you should be good to go. Just remember on the other side, all those shavings, they need to be cleaned out. Make sure not to have any shavings on the bearing because it's, once it gets in there, you pretty much have to replace the bearings, so just wipe them off with a microfiber or use an air hose or blow them. Just remember to use safety glasses because you don't want to get a piece of metal in your eye or you're going to go to the emergency room. So we're going to show you what it looks like on the other side and then we'll probably come back over here. So as you can see, we went ahead and tightened this bolt up. Like Again, it's a 12 millimeter bolt. Put the other one through and tighten it up. So now we're going to go back to the other side and show you what we need to do. Actually, we're going to go ahead and um, use, um, on this side we're going to point where we need to drill the hole and we'll go from there. So next thing we're going to do now is we're going to mock this up because we have to drill this hole in the back here. So you're going to take your 40 millimeter that you've already countersunk, put this through here. Put your nut just like that, and then we're going to tighten it up. So 
So it's the number 13. It doesn't have to be super tight, but we just want this to be flush against here. Now you're just going to take a punch or pencil and you're going to mark that hole because you need to drill the hole for that M8 flathead, which is the shortest one. And it is a 25 millimeter and that's going to go right here again with a nylock that's going to go on that side. So we're going to drill this hole and we're going to put this in, use red lock tight. And it also has a, it's the nylock, but we like to be a little bit safe. And that's going to secure both these black brackets and we'll go ahead and lock tight this as well. So what we're going to do is use a quarter inch drill bit from this side first, because you can't get a big one all the way through. So we have to use a small one and then we got to come in with a bigger size on that, on this side. So once we do that, we go ahead and put this on here. Make sure that it's the holes in the same place. So what you normally do is you take your bit and then you look through here. Make sure the hole is lined up. So now we're going to use a bigger bit. We use a bigger 5 16 bit and we're going to come in from this side. We're just test fitting it, making sure everything lines up. So we use a 5 16th, we need to use a bigger bit because that one's not working. So we went ahead and got the hole done. When you're drilling, before you drill this hole, this pilot hole, you need to make sure that this and this is flush. It's actually making contact with this back piece. If this isn't making contact you need to move this down if this is too high move this up but both of these areas right here need to make contact so what we're going to do next is we're going to put red loctite on this bolt because there is no threads even though this is a nylock we still like to put red loctite And this clogged up on me, so I need to get a little push pin. So we're gonna put some Loctite on there. It's number 13. Don't go too crazy. Then we need to take this off here and put some Loctite on there as well.
So you should have this, this, and this. This one should be RTV'd with black, so oil doesn't come out. Lock tight here and lock tight on the other side. So you got these two on. Next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and put the axle through here, through this hole. And we're gonna put the rest of the stuff on the other side now that we have this all mocked up. So we're gonna go ahead and put all this stuff back together just like how we kind of took it off and then we're gonna work on this side. So we went ahead and put all these gears in. Here's your short axle, goes in, this gear. Make sure they turn freely. So these two gears went in like this. This one goes in first and this one spin it. Now what our guy's doing, he's gonna go ahead and put some black RTV. We're gonna get this RTV in. You can use a gasket if you want. We like RTV. We're gonna put that all around here, make sure this is clean on both sides. And on the next clip we'll see that it's all bolted together and then we'll go back and show you what it looks like and then show you what we need to do on this other side. All right, we went ahead and put everything back. Just make sure that you put the bolts in the right area. Same way they came off, we went ahead and put some black RTV in here. We suggest you let it dry first. Kind of lay the RTV a little bit heavy on the inside of this, on the bottom, because that's usually where it leaks. So we have this all put back together. Next thing we're going to do is start on the other side. I'm going ahead and put this rotor with the supplied rotor bolts. We we'll go ahead and use our red Loctite here. They go on the outside. There's two hole patterns. You're going to use the ones on the outside and this is supplied to you as well as this. And then we'll go ahead and hit these with the impact a little bit. But we also use red lock. So now we've bolted this. We've hit them with the impact. In your kit, you have a shim that comes with it. You can slide the shim over the axle. It's splined. You may have to wiggle it on, but it's splined and matches. The reason why we have this is this way you don't have to grind any of this stuff. You're going to go ahead and put this on this way, just like that. You're going to put your washer, if you have one, and your nut on. Mine doesn't have one, so we just put the nut back on like that. We'll hit that with the impact later. Then you're going to take your caliper that's supplied. You can either get it in black or chrome. Just slide that in. Make sure it lines up. And it should be right in the middle. Just like this. And it actually is. So we're going to take the two caliper bolts that it came with. And we're going to install those next. Now again, I would like to, I'm going to use some Loctite in here. Red Loctite. So there's no need for washers here because it's already spaced out. We actually raised this out so that the rotor does not hit. I'm gonna put this in just like this. And tighten those. like this. Make sure it spins freely, which it does. And the rotor is in the center. So you're good to go. And as you can, you can't see it, but this is nowhere near close to the motor or to the metal here. So it's right in the middle. You will definitely feel some drag on it because it's actually touching these. But the rotor is in the center of this line here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put some Loctite on here, impact this on, get these bolting up, then we're going to go ahead and put the a banjo bolt and a banjo fitting on here, run the line, and plumb it up, run it through, and go 
see what's next. So we went ahead and we've locked tight these two bolts. Everything spins freely. Now we're going to show you the banjo fitting. You need to put the hose onto the fitting first. Tighten it up. You're going to go ahead and put this on. Then the other washer. And it said number 12. Nice and tight. Now, this has a bleeder valve built into it. If you have a 12 inch rim, this is not exactly clear, but we have provided you with a short banjo bolt with two new washers. So we're gonna show you what you're gonna do. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and run this all the way through to the master cylinder. And you get to pick what master cylinder you want. You can either not have a master cylinder if you want to have your own. If you want to have the standard one, the kit comes with it. Or you can go for an upgraded uh, rear master cylinder, the Adelaide in either chrome or, or polished aluminum or black. So we're going to run this to there. We're going to go ahead and run it to the master cylinder. And then we're going to go ahead and bleed this without the wheel. And if, again, if you have a 12, a 13 inch wheel, all you have to do is bleed it. We highly recommend that you use a vacuum pump to bleed this out. So we're gonna show you how to do that. And then we're gonna show you what you need to do if you have a 12 inch wheel. We're actually gonna be taking this off and replacing it with this once it's already bled. All right, so also just wanna point out that if you notice now that the line is black, it's because we wanted to just put some wire loom on it and hit it with some heat shrink just to give it a little bit cleaner look. It's still the same line, just put a new little twist to it. So you can see we have the line running off the banjo, going underneath, bring it around through the little frame there. And now we're working it up through the existing slots on the ruckus frame. I'll bring you for a closer look. And on this one, we're using the Adelin master cylinder. We're just going to run this line right over into this part of the cylinder here. And you can see here on our Adelin master cylinder, we have the 90 with the regular banjo fitting coming up and over. And what we're going to do is just screw it into the line here. Bring it over into the banjo fitting right now. Means you can go ahead, Felix. He's going to go ahead and tighten this together. We already got the crush washers on for the banjo bolt. After this point, we're going to go ahead and use the vacuum bleeder and get start pushing fluid through this and bench bleeding it over in the rear. Okay. Alright guys, so we have this bled. So your kit comes with this banjo fitting. These right here, they leak. They're just inexpensive. Made in Taiwan, made in China, I don't know. But they leak. 
Plus, if you have this on with this like this, it's not going to fit a 12 inch wheel. You can even, if you even cut that off, it's still not going to work. And this is your bleeder. So, this is what we did. We went ahead and put both of these on. And we used a vacuum pump that you can buy at your local AutoZone. This is right here. It's called a mini vac. And I'll put this in the description in the video. And what we do is we take this off before we do any of this. It's a two person job. We take this fitting without the banjo bolt or the banjo fitting. We put this inside and we pump. And we keep on pumping while someone's feeding the reservoir. It's going to go in here. You fill it up, get it about 15 inches of vac in there and let it just keep on pumping it and then as it fills the line up you'll just see it kind of pumping i got to about this much and just let it sit and then it no air was coming through once we did that we went ahead and put these banjo fittings in and we then proceeded to bleed the brakes as normal because this is the bleeder bolt this right here is a 14 and this is a eight. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna tighten that up and then you're gonna pump it. It should pump up pretty good if you use a vacuum. Crack that with the person holding down the level lever. Crack that, it's gonna come out, tighten it up, pump again, keep on doing it over and over and over. So the fix though, if you have a 12 inch wheel, we're gonna give you your your kit already comes with a slim line banjo bolt. We're going to give you the Harley fittings here, the crush washers, but they have rubber around there so they don't leak. So what we do is once we get it nice and tight, you got good feel on the brake lever, you're going to go ahead and do not squeeze it, do not do anything. You're going to take this out and you're going to swap these. We're actually these and the fitting that we had you got to take both of those out these two things just take them out you're gonna have to take them out of this banjo fitting and you're gonna put the blue one in or I'm sorry the black one in with these new washers you should then be able to pump it once you got it nice and tight your brake uh, pedal or your brake lever would come back um, if you want to continue to bleed the brakes some more, air bubble is going to travel up. But we had, this is the first time we did it for the 12 inch. All we did is got it nice and good, nice and hard. Then we went ahead and switched out these bolts and put the washers in and we have good lever. We're actually, we'll show you the lever that we have right now. Next. It doesn't bottom out. And it's pretty solid. So now when you turn this, and I have it on the highest setting, which is number one. It's nice and tight. It's not leaking here. And that's pretty much it. We're going to go ahead and put the wheel on, show you the clearance issues here, and show you uh, the finished product. This is a little long here on ours. But that's because we have short handlebars. If you have straight bars, um, or any other kind of bar, um, it's going to work. This is a uh, long enough for most of the applications that we have seen. So we'll be right back and show you kind of the wheel put on and go from there. All right, so we went ahead and put the wheel on. On this particular two-piece wheel, it was hitting the nuts just like it was on the uh, get brake. So what we just did is took an eight millimeter washer and we put it in between the face or the wheel face and the hub and that gave us the clearance we need so remember we are dealing with a custom scooter sometimes you do have to make some changes with the one piece wheel you're not going to have this issue because you don't have acorn nuts and it's going to hit it's going to not hit at all and when we did it we actually mocked it up with a one piece wheel not a two piece but as you can see here it's not hitting anything and it's all was is this one eight millimeter washer between the hub and the wheel and we're good so as you can see here perfect 
So we're going to go ahead and put everything together and put the muffler back on. And next thing we'll probably have is a, uh, might see us skidding on the road. Maybe not. I know we need to get this video out for everyone. So uh, we'll see what we can do. Other than that, if this is the last time, if you don't see anything, please like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for watching. All right, we're back. So we have everything lined up, put together. We have both master cylinders lined up, plumbed, bled. We ran the line underneath. We used one of our rubber grom fittings. And you can either run the line from the bottom or the top, but we highly recommend that you run it from the bottom the way that the banjo fitting fits. And it's good to go. So we have some side notes here that these are the products that we use. A vacuum pump from AutoZone, some .5 silicone fluid and we highly recommend you use dot five this way it doesn't mess up any paint you're going to need some scooter gear oil which we sell to put the gear oil back into the gear box and some red lock tight so next we're going to actually show you remember how we talked about bleeding this brake and with the supplied banjo fitting he would actually on a 12 inch rim hit this so we're going to go over some uh, a little side note for you to get some pressure out. So we're going to hand over the camera and we're going to narrate how we actually did it. All right, so we showed you before how to bleed this using a vacuum pump. So you're going to put the vacuum pump on here and you're going to unloosen this part right here and suck the fluid in until it's no bubbles come out. But Again, this is for a 13 inch wheel. If you have a 12 inch, you need to get this. Bleed it completely, tighten it, pump the brakes, crack it open, let it come out, and do that over until you have a nice good feel on your brake lever. Then what we said to do is you take this out, and it is a little messy. This one doesn't have any fluid in it, and you're gonna go ahead and replace with a slim one that's included in your kit. It's like this. Now there shouldn't be a lot of air in the line once you do it like this. <clears throat> Tighten that up really tight. Go ahead and pump your brakes and you should still have a, a good solid lever and a good strong feel. But if you don't, what you need to do is we highly recommend that you would take off the brakes. And you're going to take off these pads just like this. Take this out completely. And once you take the screw out, the brake pads will come out just like this. Now these pistons will be sticking out here because they would have pressure on them. And this is what we call blurping. So you can put these back in if you want, or you don't even have to take these out. But what you could do is you would take a screwdriver, flat tip, and you would remove some of the fluid from the reservoir so it doesn't overfill. And you would push on these, and it would actually push whatever. If there was any fluid in here, it would actually push it out the reservoir and then you would put everything back together. So you don't have to take this off if you don't want to, um, but if you want, you can just take it like this and put leverage on it, and that's actually gonna push the air if there's any that was trapped in here out the front. Just remember to remove some of the brake fluid so that it doesn't overfill your brake fluid and spill all over your scooter. And then when you're done, <clears throat> uh, put a brake rotor back in here, put it back on, pump the brakes up, and you should be good to go. Um, just like you would on a car when you're changing the brakes, no one ever bleeds the brakes. You basically, what do you do? You take out the pads, and you push these back down. You take the cap off of the reservoir, 
and you never crack your system open. So that's what we're actually doing now. We're just taking the air that would be trapped in here and we're pushing it out the master cylinder. So we hope that helps. And again, we're gonna go ahead and put the products on the bottom of the video description with hyperlinks so you can see all the products that we use. Thanks again.